It's likely that you have not heard the name Nazrin Sotoudeh, but you should have, because this is a woman operating inside of Iran, a prominent Iranian human rights lawyer, defender of women's rights there, who for years has, who has risked spending her life in jail to defend the rights of women to not wear hijabs and a number of other things. And as of this month, she has been sentenced to 33 additional years in prison for the work that she's done. And I want to break down how exactly we got to that point and what it represents for Ron. And joining us to help do that is Philippe Nassif. Welcome to the Damage Report. Thank you for having me, John. I appreciate it. Very glad to have you on. And you know, I originally read about this case actually from a report by Amnesty International. So thank you for your organization's work in this case as well. Before we get into the charges, can you tell us a little bit about Nazrin's career? Great. So, so Nazrin is a very well-known human rights advocate and human rights defender in Iran. She is an activist that has been out front and open and very, very brave for many years when it comes to the issue of the rights of women, uh, the rights of journalists, freedom of speech, freedom of expression in Iran. And uh, many of these things are taboo topics. Uh, And if you are out front and advocating for changes to the right for women to be able to not wear the hijab, for example, uh, or to be able to write and speak openly and freely about what it's like to be a woman in Iran, uh, these are uh, uh, considered offensive by the government of Iran, by the theocracy, the theocratic government that runs the country. And what we see here uh, is severe punishment being handed down to Nasreen after she was arrested uh, last summer. Uh, and we're concerned about her plight. We're concerned about all of the women uh, that are currently detained in Iran, over a hundred of uh, other women activists uh, like Ms. Sotodeh. And uh, it's, it's a big concern for Amnesty and for the human rights community. And as you point out, she's already spent, uh, it's getting on towards a year in prison, cut off from her family. Right. I mean, you talked about it being severe punishment, so let's talk about that. So what is the sentence that she is facing? And also, uh, what are the charges that the uh, Iranian uh, prosecutors uh, got her on? Well, the Iranian prosecutors are, you know, they, 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 they use a very archaic penal code uh, that uh, levies a variety of charges against women in particular. Uh, from prostitution to being outspoken about uh, violating the hijab rule in Iran that is uh, considered sacred by the theocratic government of the country. You know, this is a individual who has advocated for years that women should not be forced to wear a hijab. In Iran, if you are a woman, you have to wear head covering when you're out in public. Uh, And this is a woman who's been out front and open about how she does not feel like she should be forced and women should be forced to, uh, to wear this hijab. Uh, so they hit her on that charge. Uh, so she's got 38 years in prison and over 120 lashes uh, that she's going to be given, which is a brutal sentencing. Uh, and the judge went out of his way to give her the maximum penalty on all of the charges that have been levied against her. Uh, and it's it's horrific to see the sentencing. It's cruel. It's inhumane. Uh, and we're very concerned about the complete collapse in terms of the regard for the dignity of women like her. Uh, and human rights defenders in Iran. It's just getting worse and worse if you want to be a critic of the government and of its policies. So c- considering her role as one of the foremost defenders of women women's rights inside of Iran, do you think that this, that this sentence is really, uh, is it about her or is she being made an example of? She's being made an example. It's not just about her, although they really fear her because she's an effective advocate. She has a big following uh, in Iran. She's effective. They're terrified of women following in her example. Keep in mind, Iran is in a deep economic crisis right now. There have been a lot of protests. There's a lot of anger at the government in Iran for putting the lives of ordinary Iranians, uh, reducing the quality of life, making it impossible for them to start businesses, get jobs, et cetera, et cetera. On top of that, you have a crackdown on the ability for Iranians to communicate, to engage on the web, on social media, access to information, uh, being outspoken about issues like the hijab, for example. So there's a protest movement in Iran that is focused not just on some of the human rights conditions, but on the economic conditions. So this sentencing is a message to anybody that wants to cross the government of Iran, don't do it or you will be lashed and you'll be thrown in jail, locked away, throw away the keys for over 30 years. Uh, So it's more than just the issues that she's raising uh, because uh, there's a lot of anger in Iran right now and the theocratic government is terrified of what will manifest out of this anger. 
And, and so it sounds like what you're describing is that this is not some sort of outlier, but that this is part of a trend in the wrong direction in terms of the willingness of the regime to respect fundamental human rights or expand access or uh, make the rights worth more in practice. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a trend. If you look at the trend lines that Iran, the Iranian regime has never been a champion of human rights, to say the least, okay? Uh, both internally and externally in the region. We have seen a complete uh, collapse with the regard for human rights conditions across the Middle East uh, to begin with, especially the last several years, where a lot of these regimes feel like they're not going to be punished uh, if they are punishing their citizens who are speaking out openly against them. So on top of that general trend of the countries of the region, uh, from Saudi Arabia to Iran to Egypt, uh, you've got the particular situation within Iran itself and the economic situation, the anger at the government, et cetera. This is a part of the uh, reasoning for their uh, sentencing. They want to make an example of her. They want to scare people from being outspoken and challenging the government on these issues. Uh, but they're going to fail because there are many, many others who are now not afraid to be out there, even with this kind of a sentencing, uh, challenging the government because they feel like they have nothing to lose. Is, is there anything that either the government or perhaps more realistically people watching the show can, can do to actually help the situation to help get some justice for her? I think that uh, right now we at the United States, we in the United States don't have much leverage on Iran. Uh, we've sanctioned them, we're punishing them for a variety of reasons, really unrelated to this particular case or even human rights conditions within Iran writ large. But I do think the average everyday American can be reaching out to the members of Congress to continue to talk about the human rights aspects of what's happening in Iran and across the region. Uh, but also in particular, our European counterparts. The EU does a lot of business with Iran. The EU is engaged in talking with the Iranian government. They have a little bit more leverage to pressure the government to release people like Nasreen uh, and many of the other human rights defenders that are currently in prison and start respecting the, the average uh, everyday individual who is trying to engage in public discussion about what it's like to live in Iran today. Uh, and I think that we have leverage there. Uh, hopefully. Uh, Philippe Nassif, Middle East Advocacy Manager for Amnesty International, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.